Coming up next, Olympic record holder Quincy Watts on the men's 4x400 four relay. Tom Hammond and Craig Massback from Olympic Stadium in Barcelona as we prepare for the final event of the evening, the men's 4x400 four meter relay. The United States team set the world and Olympic records in Mexico City in 1968. Another U.S. team tied that mark in Seoul. And there's a look at Andrew Valman who will run the leadoff leg for the United States. Quincy Watts runs the second leg. Michael Johnson, the third, and Steve Lewis, the anchor. Tom, there's Roger Black of the British team. He led off their team that beat the United States a year ago in Tokyo at the World Championships, but the British are missing their fastest man from Tokyo, Derek Redmond. Last Monday, in the semifinal heats of the men's 400 meters, the world learned a valuable lesson. A lesson in what the Olympic spirit really means. Derek Redmond runs for Great Britain. He's one of that country's best. But he has a history of injuries, and this day was no different. On the backstretch, his Olympic dream came to an end. This time, it was a pulled hamstring. Four years ago, in Seoul, it was an injured Achilles tendon. Two Olympic games, and it looked as though Redmond would leave an Olympic race unfinished. set up being dogged by injury so you know I, before I went to uh, Barcelona I said you know I'm going to come away at least running as many races as I can and uh, I assumed I'd make the final but I was sort of thinking well just in case I get knocked out I'd rather be knocked out than you know, have to be uh, carried out um, and it was I didn't know I was going to do it obviously it was just a spur of the moment thing. What followed was an image that will surely last as long as Olympic Games are held. Derek Redmond would finish his Olympic race to the cheers of the thousands that packed this stadium. He began to limp towards the finish line. With 100 meters to go, his father came out of the stands to help him the rest of the way home. And when, it, when it, he came over and someone put their arms around me, I sort of shrugged them off and then he said my name. And uh, all I remember is him just breaking down and uh, he just telling me, me, you know, come on, you don't have to put yourself through this. And I said, I do, I've got to finish. And he said, well, you know, we started together, so let's finish this together. And he said, no. I don't want you hate yourself anymore, just slow down and we'll do it together. It didn't hit me how oh, great my dad's here because that wasn't, my aim was just to finish the race. Um, it's only after reflecting back on it that I'm glad he was there um, because he was possibly, apart from the coach, he was possibly the only person who could really understand what I've been through. Derek Redmond didn't set a world record last Monday. He didn't win any medals, but he completed his race. And in doing so, he showed us what the Olympics mean. Tom, after the British team beat the U.S. last year, they had T-shirts made up saying that we kicked their butts, referring to the U.S. team. It was voted the number one sports event of the year in Great Britain last year, that victory over the U.S. team. Quincy Watts, the youngster, could run a key leg, the second for the U.S. It is the key leg because the U.S. wants to be in the lead after the second leg. He'll have the opportunity to take the lead. And what about Michael Johnson? Surprised he's on this team? Well, he seemed unsure after his own semifinal run the other day, but this is a guy who's run more sub-44 second splits in the 400 than anyone in history. Here are the lane assignments. Great Britain, lane two. The U.S. in lane five. Andrew Valman, the leadoff man, has been waiting for this race for four years. He had the fastest splits in the semifinals in Seoul, was not chosen to be in the final of the 4 by 4 He got the gold medal because the U.S. team won, but he never got to run in the final in Seoul. And young Quincy Watts awaiting his turn on the second leg, and what a run he had in the 400. A star of the future, about to claim perhaps his second gold. Race on its way, lane five, Andrew Valman running the leadoff leg for the United States. Tom, the U.S. team shouldn't be challenged in this race, but you could have said the same thing a year ago in Tokyo, and Great Britain won there, so it takes a good leg by everybody to give the U.S. a chance. Valman already making up the stagger on Nigeria, and Roger Black of Great Britain's off to a good start, too. 
The U.S. and Great Britain have the greatest histories of relay running, but nobody runs relays more than the United States. And 400-meter runners like to think the U.S. owns this event. And Andrew Valman has given the U.S. a lead off the first leg with Nigeria, Trinidad, and Italy right behind him. And Roger Black has fallen way back. Here's the handoff. Second leg, Quincy Watt for the U.S. Coach Mel Rosen says you need somebody who can run a good turn and break in aggressively. And it's not going to take all that much aggression for Quincy Watts to have the lead as Valman led off in 44.5. That would have gotten him close to a medal in the open 400 meters. He was thinking about that time in Seoul, and he's given the U.S. the lead as they break out of their lane. Look at the lead for Quincy Watts. I think it's the world record that's the question right now. If the U.S. can avoid any troubles with pulled muscles or bad handoff, that's what they're chasing. And it's hard to run out front. These guys are going to have to keep their concentration and run hard from start to finish. Quincy Watts of the U.S. in front. Great Britain second. Cuba is third. Here's the handoff to the third leg. Michael Johnson Ooh, trying risky. to erase his disappointment in these games. Risky handoff. 43.1. That ties the fastest 400-meter leg in history for Quincy Watts. They're ahead of world record pace. You see the gap between the U.S. and the second-place British. A 44-second average per man would give you the world record. Right now, they're below that average. Michael Johnson used to anchoring the great teams at Baylor. And here he's running what would be like an anchor leg at Baylor. They're usually out ahead. He's out ahead. But it's going to be Steve Lewis who will determine whether the U.S. team gets the world record or not. Michael Johnson of the U.S., a big lead over Great Britain and Cuba. Here's Steve Lewis, silver medalist in the 400, a gold medal winner in Seoul in the 400. He's going to run the anchor and set sail for that world record. 44.8 for Johnson. So they're off the world record pace now. It's going to take a great run by Steve Lewis to get it. Lewis second in the open 400. Steve Lewis has a huge lead. And as he turns into the straightaway, he's chasing a world record. Steve Lewis of the U.S. This will be an overwhelming victory. All that's left now to run against is the clock. Steve Lewis powers to the finish line. All eyes go to the clock. They've got it. New world at Olympic record. set the world record in 1968. It took a team 20 years to tie it at the Seoul Olympics, but four years later, these four guys have smashed the record. 43-4 for the anchor leg for Steve Lewis. But it was Quincy Watts with that great 43-1 that did it. And there you see Darnell Hall and Chip Jenkins, the guys who handled the semi-final duty for the U.S. yesterday. They get gold medals, too. An outstanding victory, Tom, but it almost was for naught as this relay handoff from Watts to Johnson was fast, but a little bit risky. You're supposed to take what's called an open pass. You're supposed to look back for it and grasp the baton. Johnson, so anxious to take off, barely gets a hold of the baton. And it was lucky that the U.S. held on to it there. Last year, the British wore T-shirts that said, we kicked their butts. I don't know what kind of T-shirt the American team might put on. You remember all that controversy about who would make up the 4 by 400 team? That's all forgotten now. So the United States takes the gold and sets a world record, 255.74. Cuba the silver, Great Britain the bronze. And Todd Christensen is with his second group of world record setters of the evening. Thanks a lot, Tom. First of all, kudos have to go to Matthews, Freeman, Evans, and James for a record that stood for 24 years, but no longer. First of all, Andrew Valman waiting all this time to run the first leg. You ran a great one. Thank you. I just uh, tried to stay focused and give Quincy a lead. I know if he gave Quincy a lead, he's going to give Michael a bigger lead, and Steve is going to hold it for the record. Michael, I know that a disappointment in the 200, but now you're a part of a world record holding team. It's got to feel good. It feels great. It was difficult coming back out knowing that I'm not 100%. Being the best 200, 400 meter runner in the world, you want to always do your best, but sometimes you have to put your personal things aside and do what's best for the country, and I committed to this, so I went out there and did it for the U.S. 
Steve, I saw you checking the time when you were coming down the stretch. You really wanted that record. Yeah, I really did. Uh, the guys gave me a good lead. I wanted to hold it, and I knew my only comp now was just the, was the clock and to run fast. I came down the stretch to get the clock, looked up at the big screen, saw I was way ahead of everybody else. I just wanted to hold on and get the record. Q. 43-1, the fastest leg in the history of relay. 43-50, two gold medals. Nobody better pinch you, because if this is a dream, you don't want to wake up. Oh, uh, definitely. I, after I won, my, won my first goal, I thought I was going to wake up the next day and be the finals again. I, didn't, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and I came out here today, and uh, the fellas, we got together, and uh, we, had, we, had, we had a lot of controversy about the relay. We wanted just to show the U.S. that we, they can put out a good field, and they can count on us. When we work together, we can break a world record, and anything's possible. Indeed, and Tom, it's great hanging around guys with gold. All right, Todd, it has been a breathtaking night at Olympic Stadium, and we ended on an upbeat note, the second U.S. world record performance of the evening.